Now we're going to look at working with some larger numbers. We're going to start with 3 multiplied by 1,352. In a moment we're going to work through long multiplication. But to start off, I'm going to show you a method you might be able to use working across your page. We're going to multiply 3 by 1,000, and then by 300, and then by 50, and then by 2. So 3 is multiplied by each part of the number, and the parts are broken up by place value. Now if we work out each separate piece, we've got 3,000 plus 3 300s and 900, plus 3 times 50, which is 150, and 3 times 2, which is 6. Now when I add those together, I'm going to add 3,900 and that other 100 I can see, because that makes 4,000. And my eye tends to look for little things that I can do like that to make it a little bit easier. And now I'm going to add on the 50 and the 6. And see how I use the little curly brackets? There's no reason you can't do that in your book to actually show which parts you're adding, or even circle them or cross them out as you go, and then you'll know which bits you've already included. So at this point, if I was distracted and I came back, I'd know that I still needed to add 50 plus 6. So that's 56, and I've got 4056. Now this method's ideal when we're multiplying a huge number, like 1,352, or one with even more digits. When we're multiplying it by a single digit, like 3, this is a great way to split it up, because you can multiply lots of things by 3, or a single digit number, quite easily. Now let's tackle the same problem, but we'll use long multiplication. So we set it out down our page, and we start with 3 multiplied by 2 in the units place. So 3 multiplied by 2 is 6. And then we're going to multiply 3 by 5 in the tens place. So we've got 15 tens. We can put 5 there, but we're going to rename 10 of them to one of the hundreds. So we pop a little 1 up there, because we have to add that on to whatever we get to the next bit. So 3 multiplied by 3 hundreds is 900 plus that 100 we'd renamed from the tens, that's 10 hundred, or 1000. So we don't write 10 hundred, we actually put a zero as a placeholder, because we're going to have 1000. We're going to rename that. Now that zero as a placeholder is so important, otherwise we'd put the next digit in the wrong spot. Now we're multiplying 3 by 1000, and then we get 3000, and we add on one of the thousands, and we get 4,000. So it's 4,056. Now what would be really interesting is if you had the other method and this method side by side, and see as you're working through how you're working through the same sort of thing. This time we just do it in a different order. We multiply the 3 by the units first, and then the tens, and then the hundreds, and then the thousands. But we did the same thing, didn't we? Now how could we solve this problem? This time we've got a two-digit number by a three-digit number. So we're going to solve this using long multiplication. We could set out our work with the 23 at the top, and multiply it by 354, or we could multiply 354 by 23. If we do, we get the same answer, whichever way we would use. But the one on the left would mean we have to work down three lines on our book, and the one on the right, only two lines of workings. Now you're still going to have to work to the left, so you're not going to do any less number of calculations. I just like less lines going down my page, so for me, I'm going to use that method. But you could use either. Now let's have a look. I've just moved it over to the middle of the page. Our first step is to multiply 3 units by 354. So 3 units by 4 units is 12 units, so we can put a 2 in the units place and rename 10 of the units to one of the tens. 3 times 5 is 15, and 1 is 16. So we're going to rename 10 of the tens to one of the hundreds. Now 3 times 3 is 9, but we've got that 1 that we're adding on, so we need to put 10 of the hundreds down. So we put a 0 in the hundreds place, and a 1 in the thousands place. And now when we go to the next line, we're actually going to be multiplying by two tens. 
We can't just start writing in the units place though, because if we multiply by two tens, that's not the same as multiplying by two units. So we're going to put a zero down so that the number reflects that it's actually ten, tens that we're multiplying by. So two fours are eight. We can pop that there. Two fives are ten. So we're going to put a zero and rename ten to one and pop that up in the hundreds place. Two threes are six and one more makes seven. So even though we've multiplied in the hundredth place, it sits in the thousands place because remember we're multiplying by two tens. Now we can add these two numbers together. We've got two in the units place, 14 tens, so four tens, and we're going to rename 10 of them to one of the hundreds. And there are no hundreds there, so that one brings it up to one of the hundreds. And in the thousands place, we've got eight, 8,142. Now, if I wanted to make a quick estimation of my answer, and I rounded my numbers and I said, maybe I'll work out 20 times 300. Well, two 300s are 600, so 20 300s would be 6,000. But I've got more than 20 and more than 300, so it's greater than 6,000. Why don't I multiply 20 by 400? 20 times 400 would be 8,000. So I've actually got more than 20 but less than 400. So my number's going to be more than 6,000 and 8,000 around about is what I'm expecting. And 8,142 sounds realistic to me. Now you could check it with a calculator if you wanted to be sure.